how's it going guys welcome to another bike packing cooking practice video whatever you want to call it so i want to practice some stuff now um really just to see how it transfers from a household kitchen to basically cooking in a transia mini which is very limited in in terms of space the the recipe for today is a steak and guinness stew so yeah let's crack on with it so this is probably not the smallest pack size. It's, it's, this is a fair size meal, so I need to have a bit of an assessment for this. And before I get started, actually, there's some goals that I'm looking to get out of this. See, obviously, how these things transfer into a transier. That's good, that goes without saying. But the important ones that are very specific that I'm looking to learn is, one, how many a lot of fuel how much fuel does it take basically i would expect this because of the way that i'm going to cook it i would expect this to take up to two full burners of fuel to to get the cook done um so that's that makes it quite measurable for me um second of all um in fact with all the recipes i'm looking to see what the trail weight is this would come in at kind of a, a large carry really so it would work for a two or three day trip but anything more than that and it's a bit too much to carry third in this case is i'm getting reacquainted with powder mash i've not had it since i had smash as a kid when i used to go camping with my dad it was absolutely stinking then but obviously making mashed potatoes with potatoes on the trail is a, is a is a ridiculous thing to try and do lots of water lots of mess so i need to try and make it so as i can get powdered mashed potato to taste nice with butter and seasoning so yeah that's the ingredients all right so let's go this would be about half a small onion i would say just going to cut the mushrooms into quarters they reduce they obviously get loads smaller i'm going to leave the stalks as they are get loads smaller anyway when they cook i want them to have a bit of size to them in a stew all right and that's them done right now we're going to cut this steak up but i have it from our local shop quite often and while it does look like a braising steak probably it's, it's it cooks really tender you don't have to cook it for ages and ages and it cooks like quite nice so just get rid of some of this stuff bit of fat on meat doesn't really bother me Not like that but obviously you want to get rid of the real big chunks of it and then just some you know sort of inch cubes or a bit smaller i do like to leave a bit of fat on not like i say just then not much but fat, you know, it does contain a lot of the flavour of meat. And that is the prep done, I think. So, let's get the Trangier set up. Definitely going to need the windbreak today. So to measure this properly, because I know exactly how much fuel I'm using, I'm going to fill the Trangier up all the way again. It's pretty much full. Makes it nice then. I know exactly how much fuel I've got to carry. So this may well seem all a bit ass about face to you guys but and this is why i'm saying it's going to take two i, I want to make the stew nice i want to stay you know make it properly i've looked at, like i said with my last recipe i've looked at a lot a lot of recipes online found the one that i like the most and it's got the most simple ingredients and i want to kind of cook to that one really so first off i'm going to caramelize the onions soften the onions right up um so i need a bit of butter for that which is here So while that is, while those onions are cooking down, um, the next thing that I'm going to do is basically this lovely beef is going to go into that bag of flour that I showed you just now, that seasoned flour. And what you're going to do is you're going to coat the beef completely in the flour, um, all the individual pieces. And then what you do is, is later on, we've got a few more things to do before then but you fry the beef by itself in a pan, just turning it nicely. So as you seal the beef in the flour, um, it lets less juice flow out than when you just cook the beef without any flour on it. Um, so it seals all that nice juice in there. 
Um, so you fry it like that before you put it in the rest, in with the rest of the stew and combine the ingredients. And then obviously also that flour leaves a bit of a bit of flour in the pan, a bit of flour on the meat. So when it all becomes a stew together, when the Guinness goes in there, it just helps thicken up the gravy of the stew as well. So that's the idea behind that. You're not trying to, you're obviously trying not to burn this, but you're trying to just caramelize it down, which might mean that you know, if you do it too hot, you might need to add a bit of water. This is probably a good temperature for doing this. It's, it takes a bit longer, um, but you're releasing the sugars, I think, in the, in the onion, you know, and you do that by cooking it slowly. You can smell them, they smell really sweet. So it's obviously doing the right thing. So there's that sealy bag, a bit close up. I know there's that sealy bag with the flour and the beef. Gonna give it a good kind of shake around, it's all coated nice and evenly in that flour. Right, that's fine for me with the onions. And there, just going in to the main pot, so obviously everything's gonna be combined into the little transier pot. So everything as I cook it is just going in there. Right, so mushrooms next. And a bit more butter. And um, while I've never made Guinness stew before. I make a lot of beef, I make beef stew, it's a bit of a, like a, for a lot of people, it's what my mum used to make when I was a kid, so like a normal beef stew, it's not Irish stew, is it? Irish stew is, is it lamb? I can't remember which way around it is, but like a normal beef stew was something I used to have a lot as a kid, so I make it a lot now, and a very important ingredient for any beef stew or any red meat stew, as far as I'm concerned, again, is red pepper, uh, is, um, is pepper, so I'm going to... This is a good point to start getting some pepper in is on top of these mushrooms. Now these don't need to be cooked right down until, you know, they're completely cooked. They just need a bit of a start really, because they'll cook nicely in the stew. Another very cool, like I said, I've kind of spared no expense. Not that a lot of this gear is that expensive. Um, but these are a set of, I think, GS, yeah, GSI Outdoors um, tongs. Weigh nothing, so so why not? It's good enough because we want to keep moving in the right direction here in terms of fuel, which is going down fast. All right, so now it's in with the bacon bits or pancetta or whatever you want to call it, which is crucial because then the oil that comes out of these is what you cook the steak in which again is just adds to all the beautiful flavors of uh, of a stew i'm not going to put salt on this one because obviously salt comes out of the bacon but again good coating of uh, pepper this is where i'm up to already in my stewing pot it's only like it's it looks like it's only covering the bottom really, but that's sort of the bottom inch. No, not, yeah, probably a bottom three quarters of an inch of a stove that's only three inches high already taken up. I've got this to go in there yet. I've got the beef to go in there yet. Um, yeah, tricky, it is a small stove. I have actually managed to get some methylated spirits. Maybe methylated spirits is hotter than this stuff. It doesn't seem to be, I don't know, maybe it's the wind today, but. Yeah, methylated spirits is what I'm going to try next, I think. Right, I need to get on here, really, so that's going to have to do. I'd like to have cooked a bit more fat out of that and browned it up a bit more, but I need to get going. And then let's start getting this beef on. I've just run down and got that methylated spirits that came in my other Trangia stove because this was running so slowly and it seems to have, seems to have picked up. So I think we'll just keep going with this for the minute. I mean to be honest that little bit of beef there is going to be enough enough for the whole stew really, otherwise you're not going to get it all in the pan. 
So I'll probably just do it after this one lot. I thought I was going to have to do a second lot of beef in there, but I'm not going to. That's going to do me for the beef as well. That's fine. Right, so this is what the stew looks like so far. Hopefully it's focused in okay. So just kind of mix it all around a little bit. That's the beef, bacon bit, bacon bits, pancetta, whatever you want to call it, mushrooms. Oh, just lovely in there, look at that. Beautiful. So again, I'm gonna go for a bit more pepper. And then the, obviously the secret ingredient then. Ooh, not much of a secret. Let's get some Guinness in there. And it also means that I can have a lovely little drink of Guinness. I'm gonna be letting this reduce, so I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna almost fill this all the way up. And let it cook down, which, which is going to take a while, but that's how the gravy is going to thicken into a lovely, lovely thick gravy. I give that all a nice mix through. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm just going to lid that to bring it to a boil. And then we're away. Right, so that's starting to come to a nice little, starting to simmer there. Just nice. I'll let it heat up a little bit more, but while you've been off there, you can see some flames licking up probably there now on the camera. While you've been off there, I've switched over to, uh, to methylated spirits. This is the big bottle that I managed to get um, through eBay, sent out to Spain. Um, and it does, initially it does seem like there's quite a big difference between the shop bought stuff that you can get here locally and methylated spirits, so yeah, it's good to know. You can hear it blazing in the wind and everything now, so, so yeah, we're stewing. Perfect, so I'll start letting that reduce now. It smells like a proper, takes me back to when I was camping with my dad when, when I was younger. The other alcohols didn't really give off any smell when it was burning. But, you know, the, the smell of methylated spirits on a Trangier is really getting me feeling nostalgic. Man, I might actually need the simmering. Sick. Yeah, it's so much hot. I can feel it burning me legs now. Brilliant. Love it. There's so much fire coming out of the thing. If for more on the simmering, I think, for sure. Because that's just a bit ridiculous. Still loads of flames coming out of it. Yeah, I had to make some sort of quick adjustments there to account for the fact that this was so much running so much hotter than I'm used to now that I've not been using meths. It's amazing, I'm chuffed for that. Even now with the simmer ring right down to sort of sort of quarter of the way, it's still Horsing out the sides of this, probably a more of an issue with the Trangier Mini as it's set up than, than with a normal Trangier. Thickening up lovely already, so this is going to be, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to stew for like a full hour or anything like that, but it's it's going to, you know, drop down again in the next 10 minutes and thicken up, so yeah, maybe another 10 minutes on this, I reckon. It smells absolutely divine. I'm struggling to wait. Not that it's taking it excessively long. I really want to taste it. Taste it. I've never had homemade Guinness steak and Guinness pie, uh, steak and Guinness stew. I've had it, I think, in pubs and stuff. Oh my word! Oh, oh my god, that's lovely. Well, the stew has probably already dropped a good uh, five, ten millimeters in the in the pan. And to be honest, that gravy's thickened up to how I like it, really. So I'm probably going to take this off the heat and get going on the mashed potato. It's quick for the, especially for the, for the steak. But there's no doubt everything's going to be cooked. So I'm going to take this off and cover it. So as it carries on cooking a little bit, and then put the burner back in savage mode for a minute and get the water on for the mashed potato. All right, so that's a good boil on that. Let's get the simmering back on, doing its stuff. Now I'm just gonna eyeball it with the with the mashed potato. I'm not 
going to be too precious about it all. We'll just go little and often with everything. See if we can make a decent mashed potato out of this stuff they have in Spain. Probably doesn't even need to be on the heat for this bit, but... I can always lift it. Just cook by taste, eh? It doesn't matter what anything really says, it just needs to taste nice, which in my experience of powdered mash when I was younger, it never really was very nice. Um, let's go in with a bit of cream. I think I've just run out of fuel as well. Right, so that's some butter. Let's have a look. out of flameage so we'll sort that out a minute flame up a little bit and get the simmering on there in the meantime I can chuck a bit of salt and pepper into my mashed potato all right so let's get a bit of heat through this and then give it a taste test That'll be enough for me. More salt, for sure. nice that is nice smashed potato I mean that's a lot of extra bits in it I suppose but it's nice so I'm just gonna let that that mash heat through and then get ready for, for the thumbnail well guys that's it there's only one thing left to do isn't there that was a bit of a labor of love that one I enjoyed that I do love a stew so you saw you will have seen it on the thumbnail just now I don't want to risk tipping it all over oh my word look at this I've taken another photo of it this was 100% well worth the effort I know that because I can smell it and had a cheeky little taste just now when on camera though mm. I normally wouldn't do all that um and ah in, um, but it's because this is this is a new cook for me, even myself. So it's uh, yeah, it reminds me of something I used to eat when I was a kid. I think my stepmom used to cook it, maybe. Oh, that is absolutely delicious. It's like got a real strong, really strong taste compared to like a normal stew that you would do with like just a normal beef gravy without the Guinness. Real strong gravy. And the bacon I think also adds to that, makes it really strong as well. Powdered potatoes are either much better now than it used to be, or it's just worth taking that time to really season it. Like it's had, that's had quite a lot of salt, a little bit of pepper. It's had that butter, quite a good knob of butter, and, and then it's had cream as well. So that's had a lot of extras in it. It almost gives like a, um, almost sort of like a wine flavour, like when you cook something in red wine. It's that same kind of flavour. Trying to say as much as I can about the flavour in case you've never had it before. It's really strong. It's not an alcohol taste, but there's like just a hint of bitterness there. Like from, from obviously the Guinness, but not in a bad way. It doesn't need a lot of salt because I've put, you know, obviously I, I season stuff individually. But once it was in the pan, obviously, the pancetta or the bacon bits, 
a lot of salt in there so you don't really need to salt this dish very much but I, I like it peppery I think stew is much nicer with a good bit of pepper in it I would demolish this after a bike day a bike ride and I've <coughs> not had any lunch today yet and it's like four o'clock so I'm hungry now so it's quite a good comparison but I've not got enough food here I've got plenty for the meal now but I've not got enough food here that's the wrong time to put a mouthful in not got enough for a second meal well, you, when you can, it's ideal if you can make stuff last for two two meals. I would I would eat this for breakfast, it doesn't bother me. I would normally put the mashed potato on top of the stew. I wanted to be able to see the actual stew in the thumbnail really, so I'm eating it like this as well, but I would top the stew definitely with that mashed potato because it's an absolute match made in heaven. Got one of these scrapers as well, from I think it's GSI and they're great for just getting pans sort of pre clean before you do your washing in a minute. So it's like rubbery and you can just get absolutely everything out of the pan. But like you get it like that, you know, before you even have to, to wash up. So it's a, it's five euro, five euros well spent for me. It seems ridiculous, but works a treat. So you can see I've got the most of that, but there's that gnarly stuff baked on a little bit on the sides. Well, I'll use my plastic part for that. Yeah, and that's just loosened up the worst of it there. So that works really well, that. A great little piece of kit. Um, yeah. So guys, that's another video down. So um, off my checklist, I would say I can definitely get that done in two fills of methylated spirits, not that crap stuff from the hardware store here. That's a definite. You can definitely make this powder mashed potato taste nice now, just with a few other ingredients. So that worked really well. Trail weight, again, there's no extra review on this. The only thing, the trail weight obviously hasn't changed apart from I can make it a bit smaller because I've not used half of the beef and I could compress the other bits, you know, carry a less, one less mushroom perhaps, um, a little bit less onion, not that it really matters. But the thing that is confirmed is that it's 100% worth the trail weight. That is such a lovely meal um, and Obviously one of the heaviest ingredients of our, out of the whole thing is a can of Guinness, but the way to look at it is that you obviously get a steak and Guinness stew, which is absolutely lovely, and you get half a can of Guinness out of the deal. So it's, again, worth the wait. So yeah, that's it, guys. Um, my next recipe to try will probably be something a bit sim more simple, and it will probably be something breakfast related, something real quick and easy, like uh, like a French toast sandwich or something like the like you see. It's street, I saw it first. It's street food out in India. Um, so I'll probably make one of those in the next video. But in the meantime, thanks a lot, guys, and on your bikes.